So let's continue with our stack and queue playlist before starting off. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is sliding window maximum. So what is the problem statement? It is stating that you will be given a num sare, you will be given a value of k. Now your task is to start with the first window of the size k. So over here you start with the first window of size k and you get the maximum out of it. So what will be the maximum? That will be 3 of the first window of size k. Perfect. If I ask you what is the next window? Now this was the window. Which one is the next window? Can I say if I slide it by one place, this will be the next window, which is typically this one. And what is the maximum in it? Again, 3. So you write a 3. So I can say that in this particular window, the maximum is 3. Again, you go to the next window. So if I have to go to the next window, can I say that this is my next window? So I'll end up just erasing this. And I'll have the new window as this one. What is the maximum? Can I say 5? I can. And if I ask you what is the next window? I can just slide it and this will be my next window. So I'm at my new window now. What is the maximum? 5. Again I slide it. This time this will be my new window. Can I say this? Yes, I can. So I can erase it. What is the maximum? Again 5. Again make sure you move to the next window which is this one. So if I move to the next window, what is the maximum? The maximum is 3. Again I can say move to the next window which is this one. So I can just erase the current window and move to the next and the maximum is 6. After that, I don't have any other window. And if I don't have any other window, we stop. So if you try out all the windows of size 3, you will get a maximum of from each of these windows. You store them in a list or an array and that is what you will be returning. So what is the naive solution to this one? I know one thing for sure. We start from index 0 and we could straight away scan the next k elements. After that, we move to the next index and again scan the next, you know, three elements or k elements and again move to the next and again scan three, again move to the next and again scan three, again move to the next and scan three and so on. I can go on till here because this is where I'll get the last three elements. If I have to write down the indexes, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Till 6th index is where I'll go for n equal to 9. So that's 9 minus 3. 9 minus k is where I'll go till. Okay. I know that for short. So what I'll do is I'll keep a list where I'll store all the answers. And I'll start by saying, okay, I can traverse from i equal to 0 till n minus k. Because that is where till I can generate all the windows. I can store a maximum and I can say that the maximum initially will be array of i. I know the elements will be from i equal to how many? If I say this is 0, this is 1, 2. So I take till k elements, which is nothing but 0 plus 3 minus 1, which is nothing but i plus k minus 1. Can I say this? I can because if i is here, be i plus k minus 1. So I'll go till i plus k minus 1. Perfect. And It'll be very simple. Max e equal to max of max e comma array of j. And that will give me the maximum of that particular window. Once I have it, you could do a list dot add or whatever language you're using. You could just push the maxi to it. And once you're done, you could end up returning the list. And that's it. So what will be the time complexity? I can say that this is running for bigo of n minus k for sure. I can say that this is running for bigo of k. So the overall time complexity will be n minus k multiplied with k for sure. A bigo of n minus k multiplied with bigo of k. What about the space complexity? I'm running it for n minus k because till n minus k because I have n minus k windows. So I can say the number of windows will be equal to the number of maximum size store. That will be the size of the list. So n minus k is the size of the list. Perfect. So this is where the interviewer will not be happy because you're running a nested loop kind of a, you know, algorithm. They'll ask you to optimize this. So we need to optimize our brute force solution. And the brute force, what I was doing was, I was scanning through each and every window. And that is the reason I ended up taking 
quadratic time complexity. And the interviewer is asking you to optimize a somewhere near about Bigo of n time complexity. That means it's an indication that you should start looking at a Bigo of n time complexity, which means I'll have to solve it while doing a single traversal, while doing a single traversal. Can I do it? What was I doing previously? I was going through each and every window and then I was scanning through it to get the maximum. What if I say that, hey, maybe I can just traverse, maybe I could just traverse and keep a track of K elements. How will I do that? It's simple. Yes, 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 yes. But when you add minus 3, you are having 4 elements with you. So you just trim it off. After that, when you have a 5, you trim it off. After that, when you have a 3, you trim it off. After that, when you have a 7, you trim it off. After that, when you have a 1, you trim it off. So every moment, you're keeping a track of K elements. So the first priority is, you know, tracking, like keep a track of K elements. Like keep, like just keep the window elements. Don't keep anything outside. Keep the window elements. That's the track. Keep the window elements. Perfect. So which means whenever I'm at 7, I'll add it, I'll add it and at the same time I'll delete it. So I need a data structure which adds and you know throws out the outside. Perfect. What else I need? Imagine I'm at this particular place which is 5, 3, 7 and I need the maximum. In order to get the maximum, I'll have to scan through each and every element in that window and that is what was taking time. So I cannot scan through. I cannot scan through. This is where I'll use the concept of monotonic stack. I'll explain you. It's very simple. And I'll be like, I'll be storing elements in a decreasing order. Why decreasing order? As I go through in a dry run, you'll start understanding why decreasing order. How did I end up understanding that it is a monotonic stack? You'll have to do, you know, a bit of here and there. You'll have to do play around with pen and paper then it will start coming to your brain. It will take time. But if you have the knowledge of monotonic stack, you should implement whenever you need the greatest or you need the smallest, you know, in constant complexity. Whenever you need greatest or smallest in constant, you should think of monotonic stack. Got it? Okay, so I know one thing. I need to keep the window elements. That means I need to add and I need to delete. I need to add from the front. I need to delete. And in order for monotonic stack, I need just a stack. I need a data structure stack. I need a data structure which kind of, you know, adds and deletes. I need a two-way data structure, like something which is, you know, open from both ends so that I can, I can add and I can delete, okay? So, do I use a stack and a data structure for K elements? No, I use a single data structure. And that is nothing but the doubly DQ. My bad, maybe I can draw it something like this. So this is the DQ data structure. So what this allows is, this allows you to, you know, push from the back. This allows you to pop from the back. And this is what acts as your stack. You could always push back. That is similar to, you know, stack dot push. And you can pop back. That is pretty much similar to pop in stack. Okay. And what you could do is you could also push front. You could also push front and you could also pop front. White. Simple. Now this is what will be required to take out elements because you'll be taking out elements every time you move. So this is a data structure where the right end can be used as a stack and the left end Left side could be used to not remove elements. So what I've done is, I've drawn the DQ. Yes, but I've kept it open so that you know that from the top, we insert stack elements. And from the bottom, you could always remove elements. So this is a DQ which is going to store index and values. Not values, values is just for your reference. So what I will be doing is, I'll be starting with the first element, right? And that is one index zero and the dq doesn't have anything so you could simply just push back in the stack so it'll be like zero the index with a value of one 
value is just for reference i'll be moving to this one so when you are at the index one the first thing you'll have to keep in mind is is are you storing anything outside window remember the window is something here so it's still not storing like you're storing zeroth index it is still not outside your window of size 3 say okay but you have a 3 you have a 3 and as i told you we will be maintaining a monotonic stack which is decreasing in nature so i have a 3 now tell me one thing if you have a 3 is there a point because i'm looking for maximum is there a point of storing one no there's no point of storing one because if you have a 3 it's this literally no point of storing one so this is where you'll say that hey listen can you just you know go out okay he's gone so i'll be storing index 1 and a value 3 perfect after that i'll be coming to minus 1 so when i come to you know minus 1 i'll be like this is my window this is my window so look at the stack stack is having element 1 right that's the last element that we have and that is okay that is inside the window because the window ends at 0 that is inside the window so the window we are still carrying the you know correct window what is the next thing we have a minus 1 now you might say that hey we have a 3 why will we store minus 1 i'll tell you why imagine this is minus 5 and when the window is this much tell me which is the maximum minus 5 is not maximum minus 1 is maximum so you'll have to store minus 1 because when 3 is gone when 3 is gone you need the next you need the next greatest element Got it? That's why I'm storing like this 3 minus 1. So when 3 is gone, still have minus 1. So what you'll do is you'll take that minus 1, which is at index 2, and you'll put it in. So we are storing in a monotonic decreasing fashion, if you see, which is like this here. No, not like this, like this. Monotonic decreasing fashion. Perfect. What is the next? So before going next, you are at your first window size. So can you get me the maximum? Yes, because I'm storing in an increasing fashion. You could straight away get the element from the back, you know, from the front. In DQ, this is front. In DQ, this is front. So you could straight away get from the front. So I'll get the element and that is 3. So I can straight away write the element 3. After that, I'll move here. So when I move here, again, I'm at 3. I know the window is still 1. Is it valid? Yeah, the last element is still valid. So I can keep it. So I have a minus 3. Can I put it into the stack? Yes, I can because even if I put it, it still maintains a decreasing order. And the index is 3. If I want, because I want the maximum. Because this is new window. I want the maximum for it. So again, you look at the front element and that's 3. So you can just pick it up. Next, you go to 4. So when you go to the fourth index, you know this is where you are. This is where you are. Correct? Till second is what you can allow. So at max, one element will go up from the stack, which is the last element. So you could go and do a pop front. You could go and do a pop front. So this will go. So you could easily take it out. Right? That's why you need a doubly ended queue. Perfect. So I've taken it out. So I'm maintaining the, the window now. What is the next thing? I need the greatest. Tell me if you have a 5. If you have a 5. Do you actually need minus 3? Do you actually need minus 5? No. That's where you end up first deleting this, then deleting this, and eventually entering the fifth element which is at index 4. So now you are again at a window and if I ask you what is the maximum, you look at the front element which is 5. So you'd say that 5 is my thing. And then you go across here. So when you go across here, the first thing is maintain the key elements. So you'll be like, okay, which is the last? 3. And this is still 4. It is inside my window. What's the next? You got a 3. So you could straight away say that, okay, I can just keep the lower element and I can write the index as 5. Perfect. And if I ask you, for this window, which one is the maximum? You'll again look at and you'll see that 5 is the maximum. So you'll take 5. After that, you'll move across. Now this is where you get 7. So when you get 7, you're like, hey, listen, I don't need 3, I don't need 5. But before that, please make sure. This is where you are. This is where you are. Okay. And this is the last index of the window. And this is still valid. You don't have to remove. Now, you're looking for 7. Like 7 is very big. So, what you'll do is, you'll take this out. You'll take this out. Everyone is gone. And I'll take the window 6 and the value 7. And for this window, the answer will be 7. After that, we're coming across to 1. So, you could just keep on doing this process. Very simple. Very, very simple. So, what I'll do now is, I'll write down the pseudocode. So, you'll have to write down the function. 
and the function will be having an array and a value k. What do I need to return? I need to return a list, right? So I can define a list and what will be that, like what will be the size of the list? Can I say this number of, you know, number of maximums of windows will be n minus k? We already did it. These many windows we'll have. So you can define a list of that size. Perfect. And now what you can do is, you can also define a dq. And I'll start traversing from i equal to 0 till n minus 1. What's the first thing you'll do? You'll check. Hey, if there's someone who is not in my window. So let's go back. Imagine you're standing at 5. And you know the window is valid till 3. Which is typically 5 minus k, which is 3. That gives you 2. So if anyone is equal to 2 or anything under 2. Anything equal to or under 2. So you'll be taking it out. So you'll be like, hey listen. I know at max there can be 1 element. Because when you're adding 1, you'll always remove 1 from the back. So you'll be like, hey, listen, if the DQ is not empty, please always check it. Please always check it. If the DQ is not empty and and the DQ dot back is lesser than or equal to, very important, the current index minus K. That's the case. Hey, hey, you can't stay. By the way, DQ dot front, not back. DQ dot front, not back. You could say that DQ dot pop front. Perfect. So you'll be just taking it out. So I've made sure that it is maintaining the correct window elements. What is the next job? To make sure that we maintain greater elements? So I'll be like, okay, I need to maintain greater elements. So maybe I could do a while stack.empty, not stack, dq.empty. And, and we're playing with stack. Like we're playing with dq, which is treated as stack. So I'll be like, hey, array of dq dot back if that value you know is lesser than or you can say lesser than equal to because there's no point in storing the same elements as well array of i do i need to store it no this is when you say dq dot pop back so you throw out. you end up throwing out everything and once you are through like thrown out everything you basically end up saying dq dot push because this is where you push i. Very important, you push i, not the element. And after this, where does your first window start? Remember the first window starts at k minus 1. So if your window has started, which means if i is greater than or equal to k minus 1, then your list will have an answer to add. And what will be that answer? That answer will be array of dq dot front. Because the stack is maintaining a monotonic order. The last element. So the last element is front. And that will be your answer. Perfect. And I could say that the for loop is over. And eventually I could end up returning the list. And the function is over. So now it's time to analyze the time complexity. Can I say this? That this is definitely taking a big O of N. And then what I'm doing is. I'm popping out. I'm taking it out. I'm pushing elements. So at max, at max, I'll end up pushing n elements. So at max, even if I'm popping it out, it'll be n times. So even if the while loop, if I combine everything, because what they're doing is, you know, taking elements out. So if I've pushed n elements, if I've pushed n elements, the maximum they can take out is n elements. Thereby, this will be big of n overall as nothing else. So what I can say is the time complexity is B go of 2N because N for traversal and N pop backs, N put, pulling out elements. What about the space complexity? At any moment in the DQ, I'm not storing more than K elements. I'm just storing the window size elements. Plus, I need the answer. So that's a N minus K, N minus K for the list because I'm storing the answer as well. So this will be the overall time complexity and the space complexity for this particular solution. I hope you have understood it. So if you're still now watching and if you've understood everything, please, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us as well. For this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, bye. Take care.